Hi guys, and welcome to VO Tech Guru, voice over technology simplified. Today we're going to take a look at setting output levels for your audio. And by the way, if you haven't watched my tutorial on setting your recording input levels, it's a good idea for you to watch that one first and then come back here, okay? So last tutorial, we talked about setting your recording input levels to peak between minus 12 and minus 6 dB. But you may have noticed that when I was speaking, my output levels on the meter were sometimes peaking at minus 3 dB. But why? Let's jump right in and find out. To get us started, let's take a quick look at some of the milestones in the voiceover process. First, there's you voicing the project. After you edit your voiceover and set the output levels, you send it on to the production team where they mix your audio along with music, sound effects, etc. When the production team's engineer is satisfied with the final mix, it moves into the mastering stage where the mastering engineer will likely apply some finishing touches to the combined tracks like compression, EQ, etc., as well as set the final output levels for broadcasting the audio. So since your audio has to be passed forward and adjusted along the way to being mastered, it makes sense that each team should have at least a little elbow room to work with. In the world of pro audio, this elbow room is referred to as headroom. That is, how much room the mixing engineer has between your peak audio and the point where your audio will clip the meters and introduce distortion. When you set your peaks at minus 3 dB, you give the mixing engineer 3 dB of headroom to work with. So if he or she needs to increase your volume in the mix, you've given them the headroom they need to do exactly that. On a related note, when the mixing engineer mixes audio, he or she also has to be mindful of setting their output levels to give the mastering engineer the room he or she needs to increase output levels if needed. So that's the basic process. In all cases, prior to voicing a project for someone, clearly define what is expected from you, including output levels, file formats, delivery methods, etc. And while we're at it, if you're not familiar with compressors, EQs, noise gates, etc., don't use those effects to shape your tone or affect your voiceover audio. All of those effects in the right hands can be very useful to up your game as a voiceover artist, but without proper training, it's not a good idea, because it's very easy to take an otherwise great read and trash it with too much processing. Generally speaking, less is almost always more until you've got a good handle on processing your audio. And yes, we will touch on those things in future tutorials. Okay, so let's talk about the audition process as it relates to output levels. Why is it important that you send in your auditions using these same parameters? Well, one reason is that it's good to be in the habit of correctly setting your output levels. But I'm going to illustrate an even more important reason. For this example, I'm bringing in fellow pro talents Bo Stevenson and Mike Brang. In this scenario, there are four people auditioning for this project. The script calls for a male voice with a conversational and friendly tone. We'll have two newcomers who don't understand how to set their output levels, along with some other interesting issues, and Mike and Bo will send in their audio as always, like the pros that they are. Now, try to put yourself in the headspace of a producer, listening to auditions for your very important project, and let's roll tape. Remember, you're the producer. Here we go. Bo Stevenson. It's four devices in one, at half the cost of a single device. Get yours today, because they might not be here tomorrow. Billy Anderton. Is four devices in one, at half the cost of a single device. Get yours today, because they might not be here tomorrow. Mike Brang. It's four devices in one, at half the cost of a single device. Get yours today, because they might not be here tomorrow. Hey y'all, this here's Johnny Clipper for the device thing. It's four devices in one, at half the cost of a single device. Get yours today, because they might not be here tomorrow. Clearly, Mike and Bo will be kept on the shortlist for this project, while poor Billy and Johnny get tossed for various reasons. But Billy or Johnny could have read the script like a golden god, and it likely wouldn't have made a difference to the producer, because their technical games were so weak. The producer knows that he or she would have to drag them along through the process on a project that probably has a tight deadline, and there's little room for hand-holding in their business. A lot of producers will tell you that you have to get their attention within the first 5 to 10 seconds of a read where they stop listening and move on to the next audition. And if your technical game is weak, not only will you last fewer than 5 to 10 seconds, but it's possible you'll be remembered the next time you audition for that producer. And if they do remember you for sending in a sloppy audition, especially more than once, there's a good chance they won't even listen to your next audition. So as you can see, along with a good read, it's also very important that your output levels are consistently close to whatever the pros are doing when they're auditioning. And as of this tutorial, that number is usually somewhere around minus 3 dB. By doing this, you not only show the producer that you know what you're doing, but your audition will be as loud as the other pro auditions. 
and that's something you want. And although some final productions will have their audio set above or below minus 3 dB for various reasons, that's for the client to decide. At that point, the term broadcast standard becomes subjective, because these days, the audio may be used for any number of projects outside of radio or TV. Okay, so maybe now you're saying to yourself, all this is great, but how do I adjust my output levels using my recording software, also known as a Digital Audio Workstation, or DAW for short? Well, that depends. Since it's not possible to quickly cover how to set output levels for every DAW out there in this tutorial, let's take a general approach toward answering the question, and that should get you on the right track. Almost every DAW has a way to adjust final output levels. For instance, you may increase or decrease the levels using a gain adjustment knob or slider, and then export from there. Or maybe you'd like to normalize the audio by telling the DAW to adjust the peaks to your target level and let the DAW do the work for you. Or, in some cases, you may use a processing plugin known as a limiter, where you set a not to exceed level and simply run the process. But be careful with limiters, because they can chop off the ends of your waveform, which essentially reduces the dynamic range if the limiter settings are too strong, as you see here. But again, whether you manually adjust your peaks, let the DAW do it for you, or use a limiter, Audio processors like compressors, EQs, gates, etc. should only be used by trained voice talent who know how to work a mic. And if that's a concern for you at this time, I can help with that. You can find my contact info below this video. Okay guys, that's it for this tutorial. If you'd like to learn more, please remember to subscribe to this channel and you'll be notified when I release the next video. And also, if you have a little time, please share this video. You might end up helping somebody who may be struggling with VO technology, or maybe they just want to learn more about it. Alright guys? Have a productive day. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.